coding with AI is a lot of fun until you run into issues that the AI can't seem to resolve. And if you don't know how to code, this can be a complete showstopper. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can open up the code and try to figure out what's going on and then point the AI in the right direction, even if you don't know exactly what the code is doing. The code we're gonna be looking at is for this simple pizza delivery game that I started building using Lovable. The problem I'm having right now is that the controls seem to be inverted and when I press the up arrow, it goes backwards. When I press the down arrow, it goes forwards. I've tried to get Lovable to fix the issue, but the first time around it completely broke the game and the second time around it didn't seem to make any difference. So now I'm just gonna dig into the code and see what's going on. If you're using an app builder like Lovable, there's usually some sort of dev mode that you can open up and take a look at the code, but I'm actually gonna pull this code onto my computer so that it's easier for me to navigate across the files. The way to do that in this case is using the GitHub integration. So I have the code stored in this GitHub repo. Now I'm gonna open up cursor and clone that repo. Here we go. Okay, we got the repo opened. And by the way, this is the same approach you would take if you wanna copy any sort of public code from GitHub. You can simply use the built-in cursor integration to clone the repo to your computer, and then you can navigate it. But the first question becomes, what do you do? Like you got a bunch of files here, how do you actually start the code? Well, oftentimes repositories will have a readme file. So look for one of those and it'll usually say what you need to do to actually start the software. If your code doesn't have a readme file, you should just ask the AI to create one so you always have a point of reference to go back to to understand what is inside of your code base and how to start your code. Since we do have a readme in this repository, we can simply follow the steps here. So first we would do git clone and then go to the project folder, which we're already there. Then we need to install dependencies and then start the development server. And this is a pretty standard flow regardless of the language or framework that you're using. You'll usually have to install some dependencies, which is additional external code that you need to run your software. And then you actually need to start up your application. Sometimes with certain languages, you'll also have an additional step here to build the code or compile it. But in the case of running JavaScript on your computer using Node.js, you don't need that extra step. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna open a new terminal here and we'll start up this application to make sure that it can run on my computer. So I ran npm i to install dependencies and now I'm gonna run npm dev. And we should be able to access the application on this link. All right, here we go. So I got the game working on my computer and this is an important step to take because you wanna make sure the software actually starts so that as you see the changes that you're making or you're looking for certain parts of your code, you can just quickly reference it visually or inside of the console logs that your application generates. Now the game is running, but how do I know where the code even starts? The easiest way to get oriented is to simply remember the names of the files that are the usual entry point for whatever language or framework you're using. So for anything related to web, it's gonna start with an HTML file because when you open a browser, the first thing it does is retrieve the HTML. So in our case, it's gonna be index.html. And then you gotta think of the rest of the code base as a tree. It starts at one point and then it imports additional files and those files might import other files. And so you end up with this kind of web of different files that are all pieced together to form your entire application. And so we're starting with index.html, but in here you can see that we're also importing a couple of JavaScript files. And if you hold down control or command, you can actually click on that and cursor is gonna navigate you to that file. So now we're in this main.tsx, which is a TypeScript file. And we can see, again, there's a number of different imports. So I can go to index.css or I can go to app.tsx. And this is the file that is the most typical React entry point. So when you have a React application, you're generally looking for this app.tsx file. And this file will typically import and display other parts of your application. In our case, I see we are importing this index and not found. We have a couple of things that look like they are just general purpose. And then this seems like it's going to be the main file. So, okay, we got index. In here, we're importing game. I'm gonna go to game. And this is starting to get into the weeds of 
what my application is actually all about. So you should just follow these imports until you find the general area of what you're looking for. So in this file, we have game canvas and game overlay. Let's go take a look at game canvas because that sounds like it's gonna be more relevant to what I'm looking for. And in here, right away, I see this code that appears like it's related to controls. Although this strategy of clicking around and looking for relevant code may seem arbitrary, it's actually a core part of exploring an unfamiliar code base. Over time, as you get more familiar with the specific files, you'll just get an intuition for where certain parts of the code may be located. And this is why it's especially important to keep your code base organized and all of your files and functions named properly, because it's gonna make it much easier for you to find the relevant code and to point the AI to that code. Another way to find code that may be relevant is to simply search across your code base. So in this case, if I just look up for the word controls, it looks like we got this function over here. Now, this looks like it's something unrelated to the actual controls that I'm looking for. So you just gotta poke around and see what seems to be related. And then you can modify the code and add some logs to it to see if that has any effect and if it is actually the code that's running when you expect it to. So this file seems to contain the code that I'm looking for. It's all about these different keys and what they do. But how do I move forward? How do I understand what this actually says? So you've got a couple of approaches here. For best results, you want to learn some software basics that are gonna help you navigate across the code base. I have a separate AI Coding 101 video on that, so make sure to check it out. But I'll mention a couple of the most important concepts here that should make it easier for you. So in JavaScript, anytime you see const or let followed by some text, that means we're declaring a variable and we're gonna set it to whatever is on the other side of this equals sign. In this case, we're gonna call this create car function and we're gonna pass the scene into it. Here's another example of a function being called. In this case, we are calling the create delivery points function and we're passing in a scene and the number five. If we click on that, we can see here's the scene and it expects a count. And then I guess for whatever number we pass in there, that's how many delivery points it's gonna set up on the map. So following these function calls can be a really powerful way to navigate across the code so first we can see that we're creating a car and I can see the function that is responsible for that. Then I can go back and the next step is gonna be creating these delivery points and I can look at the code for that. Another strategy you can use is to ask the AI to write a description of the code. And you generally have two approaches here. You can either ask the AI to explain the code at a high level, so you get an overview of what is going on. And then you can also ask the AI to explain the code line by line. And then you can go through it and see where the issue is happening. So to get back to the car controls issue I was trying to fix, I'm just gonna add a console log here to make it say the event code, let's say, when I press a certain key. This will make it so that I know for sure that we are in the right part of the code. I'm gonna just restart. So now I have my console open here, and as I press the keys, I can see that they are indeed getting pressed. So this code seems to be related to detecting whether the keys are getting pressed, and then we are updating this game state ref object. So now I need to figure out how that actually relates to the movement through the 3JS scene that I have set up. So what I'll do is I'm just going to look for this arrow up text and see if we can find it. Okay, if I go to controls, aha, this code was relevant after all. So in here I can see that we are checking if the arrow is up or W we are going to apply this acceleration times delta. Like, I don't even know what these numbers are yet, but I can guess that if I switch this minus to a plus, that might do what I want. So I'm just gonna try it and I'll refresh. And <laughs> well, yeah, that did the trick actually. So now the up arrow and W seem to work correctly. However, the other keys, are still inverted. So sometimes you just kind of poke around and see if the changes you made have the effect that you wanted. And in this case it did. So let me see if I can modify the others 
as well. As I'm looking through it, I see a couple of these other areas that have this plus equals. This, by the way, is just coding shorthand for saying velocity z is gonna be equal to itself plus this value here. So this is just a syntax that's good to be aware of. Similarly here, this multiply equals means take the current velocity and multiply it by this number. I'm actually gonna make it easier for myself, put this back to the way it was, and now I'll explain much more precisely to cursor what change I want to be made. I want to invert the controls by switching all the plus equals to minus equals and vice versa. And then I'll make sure that we have the controls tagged and this request is very specific. So I'm pointing cursor to the exact code that I want changed and I'm being much more explicit. I'm not just saying invert the controls across this whole game. So by finding the relevant code and giving cursor much more precise instructions, I'm able to get the results that I'm looking for. So if I refresh this now, let me try it. All of the controls are working exactly the way I want now. So just to recap, the first thing that you wanna do when working with some AI generated code is get the code working on your computer so you can easily explore it and change it and see those changes reflected in the actual application. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is try to look for the code that is relevant to whatever you're working on. That way you're at least in the general ballpark and you can start asking AI questions about that code. So you could ask it to explain things line by line or ask AI to give you a high level overview of the code so that you have a better idea of where you should go next. Once you're honing in on the code that you're trying to explore, you should start following the imports and the specific function calls to see what different variables are being set to. And you can also add console logs so that you can see what is going on in the application as it's running. That way you'll be certain that you're in the right part of the code and you'll see exactly what the application is working with. I hope this helps you get the AI unstuck and be sure to check out this next video to continue your AI coding journey. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.